Alright, so we wanted to do a short video about Lyme, and the problem with that is where do you even start with Lyme disease? Lyme disease is such a confusing and complicated topic that I think I could talk for three days about it and still not cover all the bases. There, there's a lot of controversy, there's a lot of um, controversy between kind of the two rough sides that exist. Um, one side's yeah, being people that say it's you know, essentially only tick-borne, it's rare, it's very rare in the southeast, um, can be cured with antibiotics, you know, maybe even one dose or two weeks of antibiotics and that's that. The other side basically saying it's probably more complicated than that, it's probably more widespread than we're realizing. It can probably mimic just about any kind of disease process out there and that the treatment for it may be more complicated than just a short-term antibiotics, maybe longer-term antibiotics or possibly other protocols or herbal protocols. Um, there's data on both sides, so I mean it just adds to the controversy that um, I, I think we're scratching the surface with this stuff. I was talking to, to an entomologist with the CDC who told me that currently at the CDC, now this is, this is his words, I don't know if this is true or not, they only had five full-time researchers working on Lyme disease and he said and these guys are utterly you know, just overwhelmed because of the amount of data, you know, that we're dealing with. So I think the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. And further complicating the matter is the fact that especially with tick-borne disease, ticks can transmit a whole lot more than just true Lyme disease, with the, which is a bacteria called Borrelia. Um, many, many other tick-borne illnesses are possible. Usually those are called co-infections. Some of those are treated similar ways, some of those are treated differently. And then, in addition to that, the testing for all these things is problematic, um, and even the CDC ad admits this. So most of the antibody-based testing, like the Western blot, is prone to error because you can have false positives and false negatives. So that makes it difficult. There's cross-reactivity between antibodies, which can lead to those problems. The gold standard would actually be to isolate the organism. So when Dr. Uh, Willie Bergdorfer, who actually found Lyme disease back in the 70s, he isolated it out of joint fluid that he took from swollen knees in children in Lyme disease Connecticut and looked at the organism under a microscope using a, a technique called dark field microscopy, um, similar to how they diagnose syphilis and was able to see the organism. So that's a gold standard right, right there. I think if you take tissue from a person and you're able to culture the organism, which is very difficult to do but sometimes can be done, or if you do something like microscopy where you see the organism, then I feel like that's, that's a gold standard diagnosis. But the, another problem with Lyme is we know it doesn't stay in the bloodstream very long. It actually burrows into tissue. And so if you want to try to find the organism, you got to figure out where it is first, and that's incredibly difficult, unless you've got something like a swollen joint. So some of the more advanced testing that we're doing now uh, is through Armin Labs. They're actually out of Germany. Um, they advertise that they have a very high um, sensitivity and specificity, and so we're very intrigued uh, by their results. Uh, we used to do a lot of IgenX. Um, we can still offer IgenX, but most of IgenX is... Um, antibody testing. They also do some other stuff, but um, again, it, the antibody stuff is problematic, I think, under any situation. And I'm very intrigued by a company called Aperiomics, which is doing um, PCR sequencing and then using a computer program to cross uh, the results with a library of all known DNA organisms. They can also test RNA, but most of what we're looking for are actually DNA based life forms. And so, um, very, very intrigued by aperiomics, but again, you've got to you got to catch the organism that you're looking for. So, um, yeah, the CEO of that company said, "Hey, Willie, you know, why do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is. So, if you, if you want to find the organism, ideally, you got to figure out where is it and then try to go get it." Um, further complicating everything is the fact that Lyme disease symptoms can mimic anything and so many other conditions can mimic it. So when you combine that with testing that is kind of uh, problematic at best, it makes for a very confusing situation. Um, for me personally, if I see someone with tick bite, bullseye rash, flu-like illness after that, 
uh, in my book, that's essentially Lyme disease almost no matter what the testing says. So, um, very, very confusing to say the least. As far as treatment, that too, for me, it comes down to the individual. There are some people I've had that definitely responded to antibiotics. There are people that responded for a short term and then no longer responded. It seems like a combination of antibiotics combined with some of the Buner herbal protocols are working the best that I've seen. Um, but again, it, it's, it's taken on a person-to-person -person context. So uh, uh, very confusing. So that's